Hi everyone, Fenris Models here, and today we'll be looking at my build out of Academy's F22A Raptor in 172nd scale. Per usual, this build began with me removing the pieces from the sprue and placing them on the instructions where they appear to ensure I'm able to keep track of everything and that nothing would go missing throughout the build. Each piece was removed with a pair of sprue snippers, making sure to leave a little excess plastic. I then came behind with a fresh hobby blade and trimmed away any excess until I had a nice smooth finish. Extra care was taken because I am intending to send this kit off to somebody. While I do the best I can with all of my kits, I really wanted to put my best foot forward with this one since it wouldn't be living in my displays but someone else's. Once everything was ready, I could begin working on the cockpit. One by one, the parts were attached together per the instructions using Tamiya extra thin cement to bond them. And after the cockpit was assembled, it was time to work on the weapon bays. During this stage, the air intakes and landing gear wheel wells were also assembled and installed. The cockpit needed painting before it could get installed. It first got a coat of Vallejo Model Color Black 70.950. For smaller sections such as this, I find old prescription bottles with a little bit of blue tack on top to work perfect as homemade painting handles. I can spin the model around freely with not a worry in the world about accidentally touching any wet paint. Then everything got a dry brushing of Vallejo Model Air Dark Gold Gray 71.277. The open weapon bays all received a coat of Vallejo Model Air White 71.001. It does bear mentioning that while I thin my paints down with Vallejo Airbrush Thinner 71.161, I distinctly avoided doing so with the white. For whatever reason, the white is extremely runny and thin just straight from the bottle and in all actuality, it probably could use some thickening if that was possible. Then it was time for the cockpit decals. These were tiny, some of the smallest decals I think I've ever applied. The instrument panel alone had six different decals that went on. However, despite their size, they were relatively easy to put on. Being Carter Craft decals, it just took a quick soak in some water and they slid right off, no problem. Once they were all in place, they got a quick hit of Microsol decal softening solution to help them settle in place and mold to all of the details. I am extremely pleased with the final result, but what do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. Now, one thing that Academy does with this kit that I absolutely love is they offer clear parts for the weapon bay doors so you can see inside. As soon as I saw that, I immediately knew that I wanted to model the plane in flight with half of the plane as it should be, and the other half with the clear pieces. This meant that I needed to detail up, or at least weather, the weapon bays. I started with a heavy wash of Tamiya Panel Liner Accent Color Brown to bring out the shadows, and to tune down that brightness of the white. As it began to dry, I went in with some white spirit and cleaned up anywhere where the brown was setting in too darkly. and then a dry brushing of Vallejo Metal Color Steel 77.712 to bring out all of the cabling inside. Once that was all dry, there were a handful of decals that also needed to be put inside the weapon bay on the side.
With all those detailed bits painted, it was time to move on to the rest of assembly. Before I could close up the cockpit, I needed to make the engine parts first, which got a coat of black on the turbine fans and white inside of the engine itself. These were then sandwiched along with the cockpit between the two halves of the fuselage. Then I could add all of the outside parts, such as the ailerons, the tail fins, and the gear bay doors. In order to properly close the gear bay doors, however, I did need to trim back the landing struts that protrude from the opening should you be following the instructions exactly as they're laid out. Had I had some foresight, I would have just left the pieces off to begin with. Oh well, easy enough fix. And then it was time to assemble the munitions. At this stage, I wasn't sure which of the munitions I'd be using. Uh, again, since I wanted the weapons to be closed up in the bay, I had a few things I needed to consider, such as clearance. While in theory the bay and weapons should be the correct scale, oftentimes there's small discrepancies that can cause minor issues. So I chose to just go ahead and assemble all of them, and figure out that bit later. I also went ahead and popped in the weapon mounts inside the bays. As you'll see in a bit though, due to the aforementioned scale problem, I do end up ditching them. Bouncing back to the cockpit while those dried, there were some bits that needed tending to. There were still some areas that needed a little bit of black to them. I also needed to install the gun sight and get it painted. The center of the sight received some Tamiya X25 clear green before more black was used to pick out the gun sight casing and then I could cement and place the canopy. Getting back to the munitions, I eventually settled on three separate ones just to show some of the breadth of options that the F-22A has. First, a GBU-32, which got a coat of USAF Olive Drab 71.016. Second was an AIM-120C, which received some USN Light Ghost Gray 70.615 on the body and some 71.001 white on the nose cone. And finally, for the port side weapons bay, an AIM-9M, also in ghost gray with a black nose cone. I guess you can call that a nose cone. You know what I mean. Of course, all three had their own decals that, with some microsol, laid down nicely. I could then install them inside the bays one by one. As previously mentioned, you can see that I've since removed the mounts in order to allow the doors to shut all the way. Speaking of doors, time to put those in place. Even without the mounts, the doors did not want to close all the way. That was when I realized that there were these little tabs that are, I think, in there for when you want to display the kit with the doors open. Either way, I just simply snipped them off and it was good to go. And now we're just about ready for painting. All that was needed was for me to mask off the canopy and the clear bay doors that I wanted to still be able to see through. It was easy enough to put the tape in place and follow the edge with a sharp hobby blade to trim the tape to shape. Time to start one of my favorite parts, pre-shading. I really like how this effect turns out when you couple this with panel liners. Using Vallejo Black, I simply airbrushed a line over any panel lines or other places where shadows may gather such as at sharp corners, under the tail fins, or inside of the air intakes. During this process, I don't try to be ultra neat with my line work. Any deviations will just add to the visual interest of the relatively monotone final coloration of the aircraft. 
By the time I had completed the pre-shading on the bottom, the top had already dried, so I was able to quickly move on to the base coat for this plane. The whole plane received a coat of Vallejo M495 Light Gray, 71.298. I know that it and most of the grays that I'll be using for this scheme are not quite correct, but they are correct enough in my book. Well, to a degree, as you'll see here in a bit. Uh, for now, I sprayed this on light enough so the black beneath could show through, if just barely. I did have one issue I kept running into, which you'll see a couple of times in this video, I think. My airbrush would periodically shoot like it suddenly had a bubble of water suspended in the paint. I could not for the life of me figure out what was going on until I looked down at my compressor to see if maybe something was going on down there. And as it ends up, my moisture trap was half full of water and was spitting overflow into the airline. So remember, always take the time to empty out your moisture traps every now and again. Next I moved on to the darker splotches of grey. Using Model Air Medium Gunship Grey 71.097, I first outlined the patterns by eye. It may not be a perfect one-to-one -one representation, but I think it looks pretty good. Let me know in the comments what you think of it though. Do you think it would have been better for me to mask it off with some sort of masking putty? Once the patterns were outlined, they were then filled in with the gray. I made sure to go all the way to the edge of the line so as to minimize any difference between the outlining and the infill portions. Once completed, I realized just how light that light gray looked. It was way too light. However, I also noticed that I missed a step the lighter gray band around the edge of the plane's silhouette. So I simply masked it off, hoping the light gray would be roughly the right color for it. To cover over the previous color, I used Vallejo Model Air Dark Gold Gray 71.277. This was carefully applied to the plane, making sure not to go into the darker splotches, and I think it did the job quite well. The kit was then taken outside for a quick coat of gloss varnish before panel lining. Usually I apply the decals before panel lining, but something still felt off about the paint color, so I wanted to see if I could apply the panel liner almost like a filter and just blend it all together. I did wind up having to almost paint the panel liner on, for whatever reason it didn't want to flow nicely. That's okay though, for what I was wanting to do, that was actually preferred. Once it had started to dry, I took a cotton bud damp but not wet with Artist White Spirit and cleaned up the lines in the direction of airflow. In addition to applying a filter-like effect, it also mimics some of the slight weathering that we're after. Overall, yeah, I think that did the trick. Getting to the home stretch now, it was time for the exterior decals. The same process as before was followed. Soak the decal in warm water for 15 to 30 seconds and slide it onto the kit. A cotton bud was then used to press any water or air out from under the decal. Larger decals, as well as decals that were on textured surfaces, also got some microsol to help them really conform to the kit. One last coat of varnish, matte this time, and we can take off that masking tape and see the final product. And there we go, Academy's F22A Raptor in 170 second scale. I really enjoyed this build, even despite the few issues I had along the way. None of it was the kit's fault, that's for certain. I definitely recommend giving this one a go if you're wanting to build an F-22 kit for yourself. As I said earlier, this kit is a gift for someone, so definitely let me know what you think of it in the comments below. I know that it's far from perfect, but man am I happy with it. Especially considering that modern jets are far from my usual subjects. Thank you to my gift set tiered patron Cali Bear and to all of my starter set patrons. Your support means the world to me. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring that notification bell, you know all that jazz. 
I know it's such a common and basic ask, but it truly does so much for small channels like us, and it really does help us to grow. I also do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash friendrestmodels, where you can support the channel more directly. Patrons get access to behind the scenes updates, they have input on my next builds, and even get to choose which schemes I'll be using. Either way, if you want to watch more of my content, how about this video here that YouTube is recommending just for you? Take care, and remember everyone, stay safe and keep modeling.